there. Hey, everybody. Hey. We're live, and we have a special anniversary edition of the You Choose podcast, and we're just throwing everything in the mix. We've got the Grolux guys here tonight because it's their Randy of Phyllis in. It's the eighth anniversary of Grolux. Right. It is our eighth birthday anniversary podcast, birthday anniversary. Yep. Yeah. Eight years we've been yep. doing Grolux podcast. And we're going to be like, Oprah, you don't get a car. You don't get a car because we're poor podcasters. So. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's like it's our it's our eighth anniversary celebrating six years of quality podcasting. <laughs> how do we want how do we want to uh, how do we want to celebrate it? We want to s celebrate it by reading um, fair use books to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we want to do it. That's that's our present to ourselves. We're, that's we're the you. Allowed. The budget what allowed. Better, what better way to say I love you than with the gift of free use books? Yes. <laughs> Fair use books. Oh, Matthew Downs is in the, the chat. He's uh does the kids and comics podcast. Ma Maddie Double D's. Yeah. Sorry, I gotta is. stop saying Ooh. that. <laughs> <laughs> you say that you've said that for about a month. Uh. You're gonna stop saying that. So, so yeah. what, what the plan is, is we're going to mix our, what we're, we're our podcast to do. And so we're going to do a choose your own adventure book with the, the Grolix guys and gals. And then we're going <laughs> to do a mashup on the Grolix side. So we're going to do a little bit of both. We're going to have actually, a smorgasbord. smorgasbord. It's actually a three-way mashup because, uh, yeah, we're all from Grolix podcast, but we're going to borrow a kind of the premise of, our spinoff film podcast, the Grolic Cinematic Universe. So, yeah, it's getting all kinds of weird. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, in, like, <laughs> I'm ready. What are you guys doing? Wake up! Yeah, wake up. <laughs> Come on. Come on. This may be the best or the worst idea ever yes. as far as combining our shows. We'll see well, how this plays out. The best Ooh, worst you got Grolix in my you choose. Oh, no. <laughs> that sounds yeah, you choose my Grolix. <laughs> you choose does sound like a gum, so it's like, what? Oh. what? What did I just pick out of this gum? Hey, hey, listen, if anybody paid attention to our proof, Rock and Schmidt, do we have time to quick sneak? Ra Randy and Science Pimp, have you seen our proof, Rock and Schmidt promo? No, that no. made oh. me a little backstory for proof, okay. Rock and Schmidt. Well, Lee, Lee, you give them a little backstory yeah. while I fire up the video. So. In one of the first episodes that we did, it was the Choose Your Adventure book called Who Killed Harlow Thrombe? Harlow and Thrombe. Harlow That's Thrombe. A title. And mm -hmm. it was a, uh, the characters in there, one of the detectives was Prufrock, and another one was Schmidt. And they were both kind of bumbling detectives. And so Eddie came up with the idea of a 70s tag team detective duo called Prufrock and Schmidt. And that's where it came from. So without AKA further ado, not, yeah, Matt Matt just hit it. Knives out the uh, character on there. It, the Knives Out movie is loosely, very loosely based upon that Choose Your Own Adventure book. Yeah. Oh. And so the so then we unaffiliated with Knives Out decided to make our own characters, like a spinoff, you know, parody of these characters, uh, with the help of Al Garrison from Oma Comics. And uh, real quick, thirty seconds, just for everybody, just for fun. Why not? Here we go. Two cops who just can't catch a break. One can see ghosts. The other lives with his mom. Proofrock and Schmidt. Tune in and join them on their far out adventures. Join Proofrock and Schmidt as they topple crime bosses, defeat the cyborg Gypsy King, get Schmidt's mom to give him his own room. Come on, mom. Schmitty, I need that for my sewing room. Proofrock and Schmidt. The proof rock is in the pudding. Oh, that's some high, that's some high quality Schmidt right there. <laughs> now, Eddie, like that one. Schmidt, Schmidt doesn't have his own room, but he lives with his mom. Does that mean he sleeps in his mom's room? <laughs> yes, on the oh, floor. Boy. On Ew. the floor. Oh no! It is what it is. <laughs> All um, right, but yeah, but. 
where we're, where we're getting that with you choose is uh, you, the viewer, are going to help us steer this. Not all. There's five of us in this podcast yeah. tonight. Mm-hmm. The five of us are your captains and co-captains, and it's you who are going to help us choose the adventure. So we're going to read something. I think we're all going to take turns here. That's going to be crazy. Yes. yes. Oh, we are. Okay. <laughs> for the for the listener later, why don't we uh, introduce ourselves just real quick so that they know each other's voice and so we can, whoever is reading, they can kind of, oh, that's Jesse or that's Randy or whatever. So so I'm Lee with the You Choose podcast. So how about you, Eddie? I'm Eddie with the You Choose podcast. Are we just going down the going the, down Jesse? Yeah. Oh, the, we're down. going down the Brady Bunch thing. Yeah, yeah right. Then I am I am Jesse with the Grawlix podcast. I'm Randy with the Grawlix podcast, and I am Melanie, aka Science Pimp, with the Grawlix podcast. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say there was that slight hesitation. I was wondering if you're debating <laughs> whether you should just go Science Pimp or not. Yeah, or as they say, Grawlix podcast, or as they say, in Mexico, <laughs> El Pimpo de Science. <laughs> so we is. tried to come up with a, a, a horror genre for for this one so the yep. horror of high ridge we'll see i've never done read this one i have no knowledge of this one at all so this is all new for well, me apparently I don't know, anybody else read this one it wasn't well received because yeah. it already says <laughs> discarded <laughs> get, get rid of this book <laughs> <laughs> we don't want this one we don't want this one so this right, is a so new one i've new. never heard of this one I've, I'll this be honest. One, the, this... the illustrator is Paul Granger. Paul Granger did a lot of Edward Packard's books, like mm-hmm. uh, Mystery of Chimney Rock, I think T- Cave of Time, several others. So his illustrations will look familiar. But uh, let's just get into this one. Let's see, this one was number 23 in the series, written in 1983. So Man. this one's one of the newer ones, or not one of the older ones, sorry. Yeah, number 29, right? Yeah, so pretty early in the series. Typical warning. And here we are in typical nine-year-old freckled face fashion. What? Reading a book. <laughs> With our feet uh, up on the ottoman? Oh, uh, what a bad 80s. We're, wearing what, what, a what, turtleneck. We're, but look at this. We're apparently Amish. We're reading by an oil, <laughs> yes. an oil lamp. Kerosene lamp. Isn't, isn't right. that how you read every, every night at home, Jesse? You get your kerosene lamp out? Yeah. And- this is why I have so many pairs of glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly. This oh, is man. so this is th- this is the most snobbish of readers. It's like you're not you know are you really reading the the works of Edgar Rice Burroughs if you're not reading it by a gas lamp? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah. a book hipster. Snobbish. Says G- Ginger J Leno here. <laughs> All right, so chin. I'll read the Whew. I'll read the first page, and then uh, then we'll go from there and get to our first decision here. So, you are standing at the window of your cabin, looking out onto the street. But in the illustration, we're sitting, so I don't. Okay, <laughs> I'm confused already. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? The waning Anachronism. Moon, <laughs> yeah, the waning moon shines quietly over High Ridge. It reflects on the frost beginning to form. The giving each building a small mountain town a glowing outline. Earlier that evening, you said goodnight to your friend Ricardo and Lisa, who have been spending the summer with you searching for your great aunt, great uncle Rush's buried fortune. Then you settled down into your favorite part. Okay, so now we're getting into it. There we favorite go. parlor chair. Parlor chair. Now, Ooh. Randy, do you have a parlor chair at your house? Uh, yes, and. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there are no lamps. There are only, there are only, uh, you know, yeah, uh, old. Ca- ca- what is that? What kind of lamp is kerosene, that? Kerosene. Yeah. Or kerosene. Oil. Kerosene lamp. Yeah. yeah no yeah. electricity in that room. Who, who comes into a room and says, "You know what this room needs? A parlor chair and kerosene." You know, you know, and kerosene. <laughs> I actually do. I do this have a reading kerosene. chair set aside. It pretty much just holds coats. But I do have a chair <laughs> that is my. I call it the reading chair. It doesn't get used. Okay. It yeah. doesn't use. <laughs> All right, then you. Randy doesn't know how to read. That's what. The oh, no, we're gonna, no. we're gonna find it's that out. Only because he doesn't have a lamp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a. Re- he only 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 read by kerosene. That's it. That's, That's it. All. That's right. Yeah. I'm all out of kerosene. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you came to read, read, choose your own adventure <laughs> by kerosene, and I'm all out of kerosene. Okay, so so. For Randy's birthday, everybody on the Grolics, you have to give Randy a big 
bottle of kerosene. There we go. Oh, <laughs> I feel like the, you shouldn't do this that. It's going to go on the reading chair. <laughs> this is not <laughs> with all those coats. All those coats. <laughs> no, Randy. Randy puts on his Ukraine flag and goes makes Molotov co- cocktails <laughs> <laughs> for the war effort. For the yeah, war no, effort. Man. For the war effort. All right, then you settle down in your favorite parlor chair with an obscure volume of High Ridge history. You (laughs) hope this book would give you some clues to the whereabouts of the fortune. After a few hours, you dozed off. Then a sound started startled you awake. You jump to the window and look out. At first, you heard nothing. You're beginning to wonder if you imagined it. Then the sound that woke you, a moaning scarier than any sound you've ever heard, begins again. I don't like this, you say to yourself, thinking that it is your high ridge. Because, you know, who does? You've just read that 100 years ago, and again, 50 years ago, something happened in High Ridge so horrible that most people won't talk about it. And the accounts of those who do are very different. The links between both incidences are horrible moans and disappearances or ghastly deaths of town residents. You hop back into your chair and pull the blanket over your head. Just as your pounding heart slows to normal, you are startled by a nearby scream. You whip off the blanket. It's Lisa. Dang it, Lisa. The screaming stops. Lisa laughs with relief. Oh, it's you. With the blanket over your head, I thought you were a ghost. (laughs) I woke up when I heard a noise. She points to your book, where it landed on the floor when you jumped up. Ricardo comes running in. What's going on? I heard a scream. All right. Eddie, you want to take over on page three? I shall. Then the moaning. By the way, I want to take bets on how soon we betray Ricardo or Lisa. Or Lisa, yes. Yeah. One of our friends. We're going to stab one of them in the back. I already have. Yeah. (laughs) Lisa's out of line. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Is this Lisa Bonet? Who is this? Yeah. You're like, you thought I was a ghost? I'm I'm going to turn you into a real ghost right now. Then the moaning starts again. Lisa and Ricardo run to the window. It's a total Ricardo move, too. What's that? They shout together. I heard it a minute ago. I don't know what it is, but I don't like it. Let's go find out what it is, suggests Ricardo. Are you crazy, cries Lisa. Listen to it. It's scary. We have, <laughs> we've got two friends who have wildly different tolerances for, for spookiness. Well, sure is. That's what makes it fun. I say let's leave the cabin and see what it is. Not me, says Lisa. I don't want to go tramping around in the dark looking for whatever. <laughs> tramping. Too late. <laughs> tramping. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's some Grawlix shade at the. <laughs> <laughs> around in the dark looking for whatever is making that horrible sound. Both of them turn to look at you. Hold it, you two. Before we make a decision, I need to douse Ricardo in kerosene and light him on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you what I've been reading. Reading, Lisa asks. <laughs> reading? <laughs> nerd. She's like, What's nerd. That? What's that? Yeah. What is this? A book report, Ricardo asks. Wow. No, wait, you say a little angrily. This is important. I've been reading this book, High Ridge, an oral history. Uh, It's mostly a lot of ghost stories told by old timers. Some of the ghosts are Indians. Some are prospectors. This was the 80s, kids. It's not culturally appropriate. Yeah, it's 1983. Some are. They they mentioned gypsies in the last book, and I was like, listen, (laughs) we just got to roll with this. Um, (laughs) Some are prospectors. Again, offensive. Prospectors. They founded the town. Remember? So what? Quiet, Ricardo, Lisa says. (laughs) Go on. I want to hear more. (laughs) <laughs> the stories about what happens with the ghosts are conflicting. Some say the prospector ghosts kill the Indian ghosts. Wow, can ghost ghost on ghost violence? <laughs> wow, <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Like High like, Ridge. Um, it's not just a Cheech and Chong movie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> in some of it, it's the other way around. And in some, both kinds of ghosts kill actually kill townspeople. But that's all hooey, Ricardo says. <laughs> Even if you believe in ghosts, what does it have to do with us? All the stories have one thing in common, you answer. They all talk about horrible moans, just like the ones we're hearing. Just then, as if on cue, 
a moan drifts into the cabin. Everyone is silent for a moment. Then Ricardo says, well, I'm ready to look around, if you are. He doesn't sound quite as certain as he did before. Lisa, though, sounds surer than before. Not me, she says curtly. Here we go, everybody. All right. If you decide you'd rather stay in the cabin and try to ignore whatever is moaning outside, turn to page six. If you decide to investigate the eerie sounds, turn to the next page. So there you go, mm. viewers. Stay there. Listen to Lisa and just read your book. <laughs> Let them scream Any... at everything that wears a sheet on its head. Right. Make fun this, of you for reading. This right? is an interesting premise with a horror book because I feel vulnerable. The viewers get to decide. Our fate is in their hands. Yeah. So we got okay, two so votes for investigate Matt here. Says we'll investigate. By the way, Ben and Al from Omug Comics are in the chat. Yeah. Shout out to those guys. Hello. So investigate. We got, we, we got a majority on that one, so I say we just go with the investigate. I think so. Yeah. Being so curious page, and investigating then. never killed so, anyone. Never killed yeah. anyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Jesse, right, Jesse, you want to take, take us to the page, next yeah. page? All right. So yeah. Yeah, we'll just keep on keeping on. Let's go, you announce. <laughs> I really don't I really don't think there's uh anything too awful out there. You're kidding, says Lisa. Come on, Lisa, you don't believe in ghosts and spooks and stuff like that, do you? It's probably just some kid practicing for Halloween. <laughs> That's what I do. I practice. every. every you, know, you can't let Halloween just sneak up on you. You, you got to practice. You can't be re not ready. Yeah. With your not That's moaning hilarious. practice. Right. You're right. How do, you, how do you miss out on moaning pra practice? Uh, or or it's a rusty gate swinging in the wind. Maybe it's not Halloween practice. Maybe it's a gate. A rusty gate, Lisa, is really upset now. And yes, I do believe in ghosts. At least I don't disbelieve in them. I'm not going to go out there. Lisa crosses her arms and turns away. Ricardo, don't just sit there. Help me talk some Lisa, some Lisa sense. T uh, help me talk <laughs> some sense into Lisa. Lisa sense. This is a financial advising firm. It's the Lisa you could do for me. Oh. Wow. Wow. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's the kind of gems you're missing out on. Uh. Yeah. Go to the Grolix <laughs> podcast. So hear those all night long. Yeah. All night long. Yep. We, we get to claim that magic. Um, oh. <laughs> there's no wind, Ricardo says gravely. Huh? I said there's no wind. What does that have to do with anything? That means it can't be a creaky gate. Ha! Lisa faces you again. I told you so. Ricardo, that's not much help. You stop in const you stop in consternation. You don't know what to do. Everybody is silent for a few minutes. Finally, you have an idea. <laughs> Finally. But <laughs> before you can say anything, you smell that kerosene. Ooh, and my the room smell. plunges into darkness. All right, page nine. Ooh. So we're going to page nine. Okay. Don't panic, anybody. It's only the lamp. It just ran out of kerosene. Oh. This is a you know this is a real trend. This kerosene is um, not reliable. It's like yeah. electric cars. <laughs> I, I've heard. I don't know. I've heard. <laughs> what, what? Your windshield wipers. You'll be fine. Oh, okay. Why don't you get electricity like everybody else? Lisa sounds really angry. <laughs> <laughs> Ricardo is chuckling to himself. I told you, you reply angrily. I like the old time feel of the cabin the way it is. It's just like when it was my great uncle's. <laughs> How are oh, we nine man. years old? How are we nine years old and 68 years old? And no, 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 no. He's going to walk around the house with a pipe and a robe. You know who this is? This is Al Garrison at nine years old. This is who oh, he wow. would be. He'd be like, no, man, no electricity in this cat. There's no wi, wi Fi, bro. What are, what? what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Al Garrison. Rusty Gate. Maybe it's just the sound garden. Oh. I think that's a rusty I think that's a rusty cage. Oh. That, rusty cage. Yeah, Al. yeah that's uh, not a not that's a gate. A swing. That's a yeah. miss there. Um Yeah, it it just wouldn't be the same with electricity, which I think is kind of the point. Um, yeah. <laughs> except for the darkness in the cabin 
Everything is as it was before. You've forgotten what you were going to say. Then out of the blackness comes the moaning sound. Your chest feels cold, which means you should go to the doctor. Um, <laughs> you hear another noise mixed in with the with the moans. D do you hear that? You whisper. W what? The m m moans? Lisa asks, and, and apparently she stutters now. Shh, says Ricardo. Yes, I hear it too. Cries for help. I hear it now, Lisa says after a pause. Let's go. Randy, do you want to take over page 11 there? Page 11, sure. Okay. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, I have it on two screens. All right. You all run... You all run to your rooms and hastily dress in warm clothes. The night air is cold in the morning in the mountains. As you race out the door, you suddenly realize you don't know where you're going or what you're doing. Wait ah, a minute. The, the <laughs> theme minute, of this podcast. <laughs> what are we doing? We're <laughs> yeah, that's that's like five minutes <laughs> before our live stream every week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to help whoever is we're going to help whoever is calling for help. Wait. Okay, yeah. that's we're going to help whoever's calling for help, of course, <laughs> responds Lisa. What about the ghosts, you ask? Remember the stories? Ah, uh, they're just stories, Ricardo says. But maybe we should climb the church tower first and look the town over. Well, that escalated when, quickly. When, when did that come in? <laughs> yeah, it was like, <laughs> I'm not sure. That sounds like Ricardo's just been waiting the whole weekend for like. Ricardo. I'm going to climb that church tower. The I'm first climbing. chance I get, <laughs> I'm climbing that church. Uh, I wonder if maybe we shouldn't go over to Mr. Phillips' house first. Who's he? Lisa asks. The unofficial town historian. <laughs> it really bugs the official town historian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's lived here all his life and knows everything about High Ridge. He's also our nearest neighbor. Convenient. Hmm. Let's okay. See. Three if decisions. Decide, if you decide to respond to the cries for help, okay, we can re we can respond to the cries for help, climb the church tower like Ricardo wants to, or head over <laughs> to Mr. Phillips, the unofficial town historian. All right. So three options, not just two. I, I feel Man. like it's either help somebody or go just do whatever you want to do. Do a totally different, <laughs> unhelpful thing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like Fortune. going to a saloon. Is it open? Saloon. Yeah. Is it open? Because we're like nine. It's open. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> well, put, you your, know. put your head on the end of a shovel handle and run around in circles on the ground. Ooh. Drunk people Ooh. drop money. I yeah. can't tell you how I know that. That's true. <laughs> All right, oh, so some... respond to the cries for help, climb the church tower, or head to Mr. Phillips. So we got some in the chat here. Let's see. Climb the church tower, Matt. Go to Mr. Phillips. <laughs> <It's just skin laughs> <lampshades>. Wow. <laughs> that escalated with skin lampshades. <sighs> oh, then Al says visit the strange man. Yeah, yeah. That's Mr. Phillips. All right. <laughs> Never <laughs> <laughs> visiting no, the strange once. men claiming to be unofficial experts. Never killed a nine year old. Yep, not once. Yeah, not we're once. dead. <laughs> so, so that's Mr. page 27. Phillips. All right, so page 27. Are you up for this, science pimp? Uh, yeah, hold on. I gotta get there. Okay, no problem. I'm on a, I'm on a little chromebook is so it's slow and it takes a minute no you're good i'm okay. i'm going okay. off a flip phone myself on this one so we're, we're visiting a strange man that will probably kill us anyway we're nine <laughs> we're nine seems like the least helpful if somebody's actually crying for help like at least maybe on the on the church tower you could like spot them but no yeah. we're gonna go talk to some guy about town history no, yeah. let's ignore the for help. <laughs> hey I, I got time to help you out i gotta go talk i gotta talk history Listen, right. sorry. You just have to wait. I heard ghosts kill ghosts. Now I have to know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> like ghosts killing ghosts here. Ghost they really <laughs> should have led with that on the uh, <laughs> on the hey. title of this. Like the horror of High Ridge, ghosts killing ghosts. The story. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like oral the oral history. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's go over to Mr. Phillips' house. You announce. What about the cries for help? I don't know, Lisa. I don't like any of our alternatives, including staying in the cabin. 
but the cries for help are coming from that way anyway. I think it would be a good it would be good to stop in at Mr. Phillips' house. You pause, then say, Maybe he's the one calling for help. Okay, I guess. With Lisa's tentative approval, you set off. Although it is not far to your destination, it seems to take forever. It is as if the whole town is holding its breath and watching you walk down the street. As you approach the house, caution slows you down even further. Finally, the house appears. Suddenly, you stop dead in your tracks. Wait, did you see that? Yes, what do we do? Watch him, Ricardo says as he drops to the ground and crawls forward. You don't want to be left <laughs> behind, so you follow. Lisa bringing up the rear. What's happening? Do I just Why is he army crawling suddenly? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I trust Ricardo with much. <laughs> no! What page do we go to? 32. 32. Oh, okay. Okay, here we go. Uh, culturally sensitive illustration. Oh, wow. That's a, probably a ghost, right? Is that a ghost? Yeah, he looks see-through. I think so. All right. Is this, is this you, uh, Science Pimp? I don't know. Is it? Or yeah. Or want to take this back? I don't have that same picture, I don't think. It's oh, scroll yeah, down one more for the illustration. Yeah, it might be on the next oh, okay. page. If, if you're doing yeah. single page, yeah. 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 32? Yep, 32. Okay, yep. sorry. An Indian moves Very silently fine. around the house, peeking in the windows. As you are wondering how to get warning to Mr. Phillips without giving yourself away. The Indian steps back suddenly and shoots an arrow through the side window. Then he disappears into the air as if he had never existed. Before you can stop her, Lisa runs to the house and flings open the door. The silence is broken by her screams. You rush to the house. Lisa stands by the door, hands over her eyes. Mr. Phillips is sprawled on the floor, an arrow in his chest. His terror-stricken mm -hmm. eyes are wide open. He is dead. Yes! So wow. Oh, wow. 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 So ghost arrows... I was going to say, I wonder if the arrow disappeared when the ghost did, but apparently not. Yeah, I guess not. All right, page we, 34. I just want to timeline this. So we decided to go to his house. We didn't quite get to his house. Ricardo starts army crawling instantly. Right. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. I feel and like we killed this man. I feel like we're responsible for this. Yeah. I think we, we might brought be. the ghosts. I think yep. so. Yep. Lee, is this you? Uh, yeah, I can do this. You freeze, unable to move. As you stare at Mr. Phillips' body, you notice that the arrow is gradually disappearing until gone. Ghost you arrow! Turn to Ricardo. You turn to Ricardo and Lisa. They've been watching the arrow, too. Keep watching, says Ricardo. You wonder what he's talking about as you turn back to the corpse. The body is disappearing. A minute later, it vanishes completely. Now, now wh wh what? Le whispers Lisa. Three yeah. yeah. decisions, yeah. everybody. What? Mr. Phillips was an unofficial ghost historian. Ghost <laughs> this <laughs> is ghost on ghost murder. Wow. Where am I going to get the oral history of Horror Ridge? Hey, they addressed Not my from a ghost. Question. They addressed They're my dead. question. They addressed they the one question I had. The arrow disappeared. Yep. Ah, uh, you did? Yeah. Good job. Yeah, All right. This is reality. Right. It's upside time. down right now. If you decide to go back to your house and hide there, Turn to page 71. So we're at Mr. Phillips' house. Is that yep. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. If you decide that you must have information on what is happening, <laughs> turn to page 101. Okay. <laughs> if you decide to be safer to stay where you are, turn Ooh. to page 83. So do we go back to our house, I guess, find more information, or do we just stay in Mr. Phillips' house? So there's your three options, viewers. What do we do? You got to search his house for all his uh, screwdrivers and his headphones right yes because it's all it's kerosene it's all phillips <laughs> right 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 well, you get the kerosene i need more kerosene i can't read these books without kerosene <laughs> 101 it's the gen ed class of uh finding oh, out how ghosts that. can kill each other i'm glad this didn't get dark where they're like man mr phillips's body is <laughs> 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 can we get an axe <laughs> they're just moving on they're just like where what should we do should we hide or should we, we look for some clues scooby hide the body in the basement no no you went dark <laughs> Okay, so Matt says stay where we're stay where we're at. You're not a ghost, so you can't kill. You can't get killed. Oh, <laughs> he's got a point. He's got a That's point. 
We've only She's witnessed ghost on ghost violence. <laughs> Unofficially <laughs> investigating ghost murders never hurt anybody. <laughs> yeah. Al, Al says, go get more information. So we got a vote for stay and a vote for go get more information. So we need somebody. I to... love every answer is for a, di- it, for most part for the different thing, but they're all like, that never got anyone killed. Never did. Yeah. That's that's <laughs> the general did. that's the general gist. We need to probably uh, you choose coin this, don't we? Might have to flip. Oh, get the info. Okay, so we're gonna get info. One oh one. So All that right. gets back to is that back to you? Want to go, Eddie? It's or back to me? I'll to take it. I'll take it. One oh one. Aggressive page take... turns. One oh one. One oh one. My you choose sense is tingling. Yes, it's not sounding good. I feel like this. Might we be haven't ditched for... our we haven't ditched our friends yet, though. So, well, I'm telling this... you now. Had we gone to the church bell tower, Ricardo would have been killed. We would have oh, pushed yeah. him right. <laughs> 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 ah, Ricardo. Here, you wanted to claim this so bad. Enjoy. <laughs> the first step. Right, Lisa just barges into places and screams. Yeah. 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 Uh, here we go. We'd better leave, you say. What? Go out there again? Lisa is aghast. <laughs> Ooh. Ricardo? Who? Me? Ricardo gulps. I'll go anywhere or do anything, he says finally, but he doesn't look convincing. <laughs> I'll go anywhere or do anything. <laughs> A double frankly, dog dare you, Ricardo. Frankly, that's on that's on Jesse's resume. I'll go yeah, anywhere, yeah. I'll do anything. <laughs> I'll yeah. go anywhere, I'll do anything. Just hire me. Anymore. I've got my master's degree in that. Ooh. I'll go anywhere, <laughs> do anything. Um Let's go then, you say. I think we'd better try Ricardo's idea of climbing the church tower. (laughs) (laughs) He's going to die. Oh, no. We get to push him off. You move hurriedly out the door, Ricardo behind you. After a pause, Lisa follows too. Turn to page 16. So we're going to be climbing that tower one way or the other. They're not going to let us get away from that. (laughs) No. Sometimes the choose your own adventure forces your hand. Does. Jesse, I say you take this one. All right. 16, right? Yep. All right. You lead the way to the church tower. The night air is cold on your face, which means you should go see a doctor. <laughs> you are warm, <laughs> but oh, you good. find yourself shivering nonetheless. See, still bad. Hypertension, kids. Yep, it's not yep. a joke, um, especially when you're nine. Nine. The moans. <laughs> You're nine the with moans high are, blood <laughs> It's a real problem. It's a real problem back. Yeah, I'm a cat. Back, I'm a not. It's all that kerosene fumes. It, it causes your arteries to close or something. That's I'm what it sure. is. <laughs> I'm a non electrified cabin owning nine year old. My stress is through the roof. <laughs> yes. I'm Man, I can't imagine cars. signing that lease. Man. That Elisa. <laughs> yeah, the Elisa. Elisa. <laughs> The moans occur only once as you walk to the tower. That's it. Just one time. One One scary moan. Uh, They're hollow sounding, not terribly loud, and you're unable to locate their source. The sound surrounds you. When the moans stop, you look at each other as if to say, what are we doing here? (laughs) This is is the only time we've stopped to do that. (laughs) What? I didn't know the moans had a personality and just... Okay. All right. Oh, hey, the moaning Lisa. I don't know. Oh, you continue on, <laughs> however, and soon reach the tower. The church is open because, of course, it is. Why would we have uh, any protection uh, from nine year olds climbing the tower in the dead of night? Yeah. Yeah. Why not? You climb the stairs hurriedly to the top. There's nothing to see, Lisa wails, frustrated. Keep looking on that side, Lisa, says Ricardo. There must be something. You all keep looking, but nothing appears. The red glow is not a fire. It's just a red glow over a small park on the north end of town. Except for the glow, everything seems normal until you hear footsteps coming up the tower stairs. The tread is slow, but steady. It does not sound human. (laughs) You Hmm. realize with a start that the stairs are the only way out of the tower, except for jumping. (laughs) Yeah! 35. Page 35. Oh, boy. 
We're going to push Ricardo off this tower yet. Ricardo is not walking out of here alive. Someone's leaving a ghost. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do we do? Uh, Keep calm, Lisa, whispers Ricardo. I said really loudly. Keep calm. Are you kidding? <laughs> He's right, you say. Lisa, there's nothing we can do. You sound braver than you feel. The footsteps are much closer now. I guess we just face whoever it is. Or whatever. Oh, Ricardo. Lisa is almost in tears. Then the stair climber comes into view. It's neither a prospector nor an Indian. It's just a young man. Lisa plops down in relief. You and Ricardo let out a sigh. But then you notice that your visitor is a little unusual. For one thing, he's dressed in old-fashioned clothes. For another, he flickers, turning almost invisible at times. But the old clothes oh. is really weird. That's really yeah. weird. Yeah. You gotta wear a turtleneck and tuck in his pants, <laughs> tuck in his shorts. <laughs> uh, you gotta wear a belt. Hey, are there belt loops on those yeah. jeans? <laughs> turtleneck yeah. and slacks. Yeah. yeah. Randy, you wanna take They're this one? Up. Which page are we on? 37. 37. 37. Who are you, you ask? What I am is. Oh, sorry. We didn't <laughs> I was reading off the were. screen. Okay. Sorry. No, it's okay. What I am, what I am is more appropriate, he answers. Well, what? Stammers Ricardo. Don't be alarmed. I won't hurt you. I will try to help as long as I... I will try to help as I tried once before, but I don't suppose it will work now either. I guess you'd like the whole story. Hmm. No, just ramble to yourself about things yeah. we don't know about. <laughs> Please, tell me <laughs> random. Uh, you're not sure you would, but there doesn't seem to be a choice. Shortly after this town was founded, the visitor begins... Oh, so this is, you know, your typical exposition dump ghost. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, yes. Um, some of the founding, uh, shortly before the town was founded, some of the founding prospectors came upon a group of Indians who were engaged in a re religious ceremony. And I'm sure the prospectors were respectful and left them alone. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Oh, wait, no, he, he continues on here. The prospectors were drunk and were <laughs> frightened by the Indians. They went to the saloon. I knew we should have gone. Yes. <laughs> uh... They attacked and slaughtered them, desecrated their r ritual objects and ruined their sacred site, as you do. <laughs> <laughs> but they're prospectors, after all. Uh, the rest of the Indian community retali retaliate. Wow. Okay, here we go. Retaliate. They got revenge later. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Perhaps because the interrupted ceremony was a burial ritual, the victims on, of both sides became spirits that haunt this town. Twice since then, the last time about 50 years ago, all the spirits reappeared and compelled by some horrible fo force, killed one another over and over again. Oh, see? They're just mm. killing other ghosts. Ghosts. Over ghosts the spirit, ghost violence. Over the spirits hang a red glow. Whether the actions of the spirits cause the glow or the glow directs the actions, I don't know. All right, next page. <laughs> they moved the gravestones, but not the graves. Sorry, I had to read Matt's comment. <laughs> <Yikes. Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> but how do you fit in, interrupts Ricardo. As horrible as this grotesque and involuntary game is, there is something more horrible yet. When the spirits return to town, they are also compelled to kill people there. How horrible, Lisa exclaims. <laughs> I, think there's, I think it's horrible, guys. Um, <laughs> it might be horrible. <laughs> it's bad. It's real Is bad. Is this what happened to you, you ask? <laughs> It'd be so much better if he said no. He just like, <laughs> He's like, no. Flipped. I'm actually Not still me. alive, and this is just a weird light that I wear around my neck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, he replies. The Indian chief appeared and asked me to help end the horror I tried on successfully. What were you supposed to do, Ricardo asks. The chief... We'll have to tell you. I can stay here no longer. The last words drifted back to you as, before the, your terrified gaze, the speaker throws himself off the tower. Wow! Yeah, I knew it! Uh, somebody had to. Somebody has to go over that tower. Mm. All right, page 41. And there's the, the illustration's amazing. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> huh. All right, page 41. Do you want to take that one, Melanie? Yep. You all rush to the tower's edge. The spirit floats down, landing on his feet, and runs off toward the red glow. Well, that was Ooh. lucky. Okay. Yeah. That was terrible, says Lisa. We must help. How awful to be caught in such a horror. 
What if we fail too? So asks Ricardo. But we won't, says Lisa. We're special. Sure. Oh. And there are three of us. <laughs> oh. Ooh. We outnumber the Lisa's ghosts. Lisa's a narcissist, everyone. Lisa thinks. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming uh, narcissist. Lisa's explanation isn't too convincing. You too would like to try to stop the horror, but you're also afraid of getting caught in it. That's pretty smart. Um, so we can decide to help stop what's happening, or we can think it's too dangerous. Okay. There we go. All right. So let us know in the chat what you want us to do. Do you want to help stop what's happening, or you just throw up your hands and go home? <laughs> it really is dangerous, dangerous, guys. Everyone it says is. so. It's horrible. It's right. terrible. Ghost We're going to have to sacrifice ghost. Ricardo. Ricardo's got to go. <laughs> ben Crane sticking your nose where it doesn't belong never killed anyone. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Al, Screaming Narcissist was my band name in group therapy camp. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Help. We got stop. some votes for helping stop, help stop. Yep, I'm stop going to 61. Him. Yeah, I think we so got it. We're going to help stop page 61. So that would be back to me, I think. Okay. I came across this random illustration. We're burying our friend. Look at that. See? Oh, <laughs> See? oh we're going to do it. We're going to bury him. We know it's going to happen. We're actually lasting longer than I thought. So we're, we're doing pretty good here. We're doing pretty good here. Right. I thought we'd be dead by now. Yeah, we should be. We should be burying our friends. <laughs> I don't like it, but I must try to help stop the horror. Yeah, I'm with you, Lisa says. Me too, Ricardo chimes in. Well, great, you guys. Have any suggestions? I'm at a loss. I suppose we need the Indian chief. We can't just walk around looking for him. Wait, you cry. I just remembered something in the museum that's upstairs in the library. There's a statue of an Indian chief with a poem that nobody's ever figured out. I can't remember it, but it might have something to do with this. It sounds weird, but possible, says Ricardo. Shall we go to the museum and read the poem, you ask? Unless we try to find the real chief, says Lisa. Here's the choices. If you decide to go to the museum, turn to page 74. If you decide to look for the chief, turn to page 86. So museum or chief. Also, obvious. we clearly don't understand poems. Riddles, you have to figure out. Poems, you just enjoy because they're whimsical delights. <laughs> right. Oh, <laughs> see, there you go. The more you know, the more you grow. Thank you. Yes. Whimsical, whimsical delights was yeah. Jesse's nickname in pushing Ricardo out of church bell tower camp. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually okay, an so annual affair. So, yeah. Look for so, the chef. Come on, Matt. What is it? Rundi, rundi, rundi. We're not looking for the <laughs> <Yes. dee bird. laughs> We found him. Furfy de birch birch. No, Matt's just hungry. He hasn't had dinner yeah. yet. Yeah, exactly. So chief or museum. So we got one for each. So we need is that Ben voting on the read them poems? Is that what he's that vote Ben's is, a read the poem? We have two one museum. So the museum and the poem is the same thing. And then look for the look for the chief. So two 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 museums and two chiefs. We got to flip that coin. Oh man, covert nerd, the, co the covert coin the flipper future. over here. Indian chief we has a poem. So the chief and the poem are the same, right? No, the we chief, have the the poems at the museum. It's the oh. chief's poem, but it's at the museum. Oh, or because you can't have them together. If you put no. them together, no. then it might feel like a riddle. The, yeah, the chief, see. right? The chief the ghost. He probably doesn't remember. And, and Lee's busting out the, the you choose coin. So heads will go so, to the museum. Tails, we'll go see that chef. All right. Tails. Oh, we'll go see, the see some chef. <laughs> go and see the chief. So uh, that's page bork, bork. 86. <laughs> 86. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Here's the so 86, you said? Yep. Yep, we're, we're burying our friends. Yeah, you're right. I found the picture. <laughs> oh, no, Ricardo. Uh, all right, 86. So, do you want me to read this? Or you... 
there are some awesome spoiler uh illustrations i flipped through there really are yeah, like, yeah. i wanted to, let's I, I hope that happens <laughs> yeah i know that's the thing when you when you're getting these books you would just oh that's cool i'm reading that how do i get there right okay who's up is that you eddie i think it's me okay let's find the chief i see two problems says ricardo ricardo listen uh, you don't get paid for this here. he's always throwing wrenches one, we, we know that the Indian and the prospector ghost are both dangerous. Two, since we don't know exactly where to find the chief, we might run into the ghosts. What should we do, you ask? We just made a choice, Ricardo. Yeah, come on. Well, well the best way to find the chief is to split up. Oh, which oh, is a dumb idea. As for the ghosts, I think we should disguise ourselves as Indians or prospectors. Oh, no. What? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Such a bad idea. This became oh, a Scooby-Doo man. adventure that's racially inappropriate. Quick, Lisa, <laughs> be racist. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Oh, man. Um, I think we should disguise ourselves as Indians or prospectors. If we run into them, maybe they won't notice us. <laughs> Ricardo... That's a stupid idea. That's the next illustration of us burying <laughs> Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> Ricardo, that's a stupid idea, responds Lisa. You are not so sure. <laughs> so that last decision was like, go do this or go find the chief. And then that leads to go do this or go dress up <laughs> <laughs> or go to find the chief in a real stupid way. <laughs> if, you decide, if you decide to follow Ricardo's idea and disguise yourselves, turn to page 100. If you agree with Lisa, turn to page 108. So we could cosplay as kids who think they know what they're doing and have electricity. Or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or what? Or I don't even like... know what Lisa's plan is. Or we can yeah. get the kerosene and light Ricardo on fire for having there it some is. idea. <laughs> there it is. If you decide to light Ricardo on fire, turn to page 105. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need to we go got, to the saloon gotta, for that kind of, that gotta kind gotta of damage. That stuff we happens gotta, at the saloon. Yeah. We got one vote for disguise. I don't know what the uh, emoji was that Kim was trying to use there. Yeah, that emoji is not popping up on. Maybe it's on. Um, yeah, I'll look on Facebook. Oh, we got two oh. votes for disguise. I think we're disguising it then. These guys. <laughs> oh, there yep. it is. Yep. Yep. So oh, that no. is Ricardo's yeah. idea. Mm. 100. All right, Jesse, All right. this is you. Page 100. Oh, good. 100. All right. Ricardo, I'm not sure what there is to your idea, but let's give it a try, you say. <laughs> <laughs> what do we do about costumes, Lisa wants to know. Now she's all in. Now she's like, but what about the costumes? Yeah. <laughs> no problem, you answer. Back of the, <laughs> back yeah. of the cabin, there's a trunk filled with all kinds of old clothes. I'm sure we can find something to fit. How many... Nine-year-olds, have you been burying? Oh, Why do you have so many weird old clothes in a trunk? <laughs> Super, oh, says Ricardo. Come on! He's oh, so happy man. we chose this idea. I like this idea. <laughs> Quickly but cautiously, yeah, yes, because nothing could be scarier than the trunk of clothes you have at home. You make your way down the tower stairs and over to the cabin. You, apparently, we've been in the tower this whole time. You find only three costumes that fit. Good. But luckily, they're Indian costumes. <laughs> what does oh, that good. mean? So we are culturally sensitive. <laughs> what does yeah. that mean? But luckily, they're Indian costumes. You gather in the parlor to decide how to best uh, how, how to best find the chief and conclude that the red glow is the best place to start. As you leave the cabin, you realize that the costumes aren't as warm as your regular clothes. It's cold outside says Lisa, winning the Captain Obvious Award. I guess we have no choice but to act like Indians. Let's See, go. Oh, in the line, the I'm line so glad that... I got to read that page. <laughs> <laughs> 102. Oh. There it is. Do I just finish this? Finish yeah, it go off, ahead. Jesse. All right. I hope this works, murmurs Lisa. You you are put to the test sooner than you'd hoped. As you turn down the next street, 
you spy a group of prospector ghosts surrounding the Howard place. They've seen us, Ricardo says. Come on, we can't run away now. Try to look as if we're going somewhere. You and Lisa <laughs> follow... <laughs> As, a, as opposed to when we were actually going somewhere i'm busy doing indian things Look at me. Uh, don't mind me i'm just going me. somewhere i'm being yeah. busy you and lisa follow him rapidly down the street as you get closer to the ghosts you realize you're shivering you don't know if it's from cold or fear then you're past them they glanced at you but didn't seem to pay much attention or so you thought. You see the ghosts grab both Ricardo and Lisa and feel a knife entering your back. As you fall to the ground, you wonder if it was the shivering that gave you away. Ghosts don't shiver, do they? The yeah, no. end. That's what gave you away. <laughs> yeah, it's the, yeah, it's yeah shivering. That, that's what gave you the shivering. Yeah. 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 Ben says I feel an HR meeting for you choose and Grolix tomorrow, but I don't know. I think this story's all right. They culturally they dressed up like this. They culturally appropriated their outfits, and look what happened. Not good. And thing. they got they got myrtleized. Yeah. Yep. They yeah. Got knifed. Knifed in the yeah. back. Or you yeah. got killed, and Lisa and Ricardo are ghost slaves. That could be. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Even man. now, that was dark. Yes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It really yeah. was. Yeah. Well, we didn't stab our friends in the back, but the prospectors did. So yeah, that's true. Yes. We there lasted is... a lot longer than I thought we were going to. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah, I was kind of shocked. Usually, it's I didn't pretty quick. That was good. I didn't fun. mean that as a as a as a jab at our Grolix friends. Normally, you get a feel about half hour in, we're usually dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we we li lived a lot longer, and we culturally appropriated. Some... <laughs> this I is mean, what I get yeah. for saying we should do a horror book. Yeah. Well, hey, that's okay. Well, cover makes more fun. sense, but then you you got your hands around your friends. You're like, I'm gonna get my friends murdered. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And Still want to bury that... our friends, though. We, yeah. we didn't get to do that. So that's what the good thing about these books is you can go through them again. So, okay. all right. Get through number two. Yep, we'll do it again. Well, all right, Grolix guys. So let everybody know what we're going to do. So uh, I'll hand it over to Jesse in a second. But Jesse, come up with an idea that basically take our Grolix Cinematic Universe concept, which is a spinoff show that sometimes happened there hasn't been an episode for a while but in which we'd review a couple of movies and then pitch a shared uh cinematic universe of those movies and so the fun is sometimes you pick movies that are similar sometimes you pick movies that are very different and that makes creating a mashup all the more fun <laughs> hey cinematic universe um cool. i regret doing that i feel like a real nerd now so <laughs> uh, Good. i love it but Jesse had the idea of since your guys' show is so like interactive, um, we'll gamify it somehow, and I'll I'll okay. hand it over to Jesse. Okay, so uh, that's basically what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna take um, two movies and mash them up, and each each uh, show got to pick two movies, right? And they're gonna okay. create a pitch, and uh, so it's it's basically we're we're taking the premise of Grox and the Mac Universe and the game Pitch Storm. If you've ever played it, it's it's got a similar dynamic to like Cards Against Humanity or any of these uh, party games where there's a judge. And so you have to convince the judge. So in true you choose fashion, the audience are the judges. Oh, so we're going to okay. give you two different pitches. Uh, the Grolix team has chosen two movies. The you choose team has chosen two movies. Uh, we're going to mash them up. We're going to pitch them at you. And uh, you you have to make the unfortunate uh, decision of uh, whose who's, uh, hard work has been all for naught. That's right. <laughs> whose who's dreams of being a script writer are about to get summarily crushed about the viewers are the studio executives about yes. to see, get yeah. ricardoed about to see millions on a guaranteed as long as you run into the room and scream like lisa does i'm fine with it you can ricardo all you want in the chat because i'll just read it as a whisper <laughs> so which team is going to go first and 
Are we both are are both teams going to announce the movies we're mashing up first, or are we going to like reveal when we I do? Think we our should pages? reveal. I, I like the idea okay. of revealing. Yeah, I just reveal yeah. It. I say Grawlix goes first. This is your guys's your jam realm here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I know the pitch for I know our pitch uh, was uh, Melanie kicked off the brainstorm, and I know Jesse added a whole bunch to it, uh, and then you know. We'll, we'll probably add a little bit as we go, but well, we'll let you pitch. We'll like, should we back out? I think we should back out and let you guys pitch to the audience, and then no, we'll come see, in after half the, the fun though is reaction. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I mean, if I'm you there. guys, if you guys, if if it inspires an idea, you want to like throw out some suggestions too. I mean, it's it's going to strengthen strengthen our yeah. It's going to work, but in our favor, you're welcome so. to do so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Jesse picked the movies. What All right, you... so I'll reveal I'll reveal what we're mashing up here. Um and 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 Melanie, you can kick into your part and then we'll we'll kind of mm-hmm. ping pong with additional details. We'll start spitballing. Does it sound good? Yep. All right. Okay. So we are mashing up because uh you know, choose your own adventure books are so 80s. We are taking two 80s icons and we're going to just put them together in a way you probably won't see coming and that is we're going to take the never ending story, Ooh. which is what some of these choose your own adventure books feel like, because you can go for a whole hour and not kill your friends. Uh, so that's movie number one. <laughs> movie number two is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Can Ooh. it be done? Yes. Can it be done? It- We're crazy. I submit that it can be done and we shall. It's <laughs> uh, <laughs> great. Um, and I. <laughs> just figured to work off the similarities uh so it starts with bastion you know he's a young boy who's lost his mom and he's having trouble in school and kind of just life in general and then one day he finds this magical book and it pulls him into a story and takes him on big adventures and he gets to make friends and uh you know meet people and then it makes him the hero of the story by teaching him that um i hold on i totally that word is like just dropped out of my mind (laughs) um i'm sorry that there's nothing to be afraid of (laughs) because isn't that the whole thing in the okay right the nothing. Um, the nothing. Yep. Oh, Man, sorry. The that that, wolf that with, me to death. with with hope he can yeah. uh, rebuild Fantasia and have you know a good life for himself. She sorry. She forgot hope existed for a moment. <laughs> I, <laughs> I forgot about hope. That's <laughs> that's, that's, word. that's that's not a science thing, is it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So, but it's it is also still the never ending story. So it has to go on, and it does. The never-ending story, it goes on. It continues helping other children, and then one day it runs into these two teenage boys who have lost their mothers and are having some problems in life and with school. And then, you know, they're not really big readers, though, so the book has to morph into something else, you know, to take them on their adventure, and it does. And, you know, they go and they meet people and learn life lessons and whatnot. And uh, then they become the heroes of their story by uh, learning to have hope that they can pass their test and, uh, you know, save the future. I think the never-ending story should take the form of, like, a rock album or something. (laughs) <laughs> for these two boys that we have not named yet a rock opera <laughs> a rock yes, opera yes. yeah hey jesse what ideas did you have to throw into this okay so yeah. now now that you've gotten this this thing you're starting to grok you're starting to grok the meta-ness of this that the never-ending story has to keep continuing right right mm-hmm. Okay. So, so here we go. Here we go. Start connecting dots. Start putting pegs on the wall. Start connecting strings. Because, because, because this is not a movie anymore, friends. I need you to take some tinfoil out, 
make a hat, protect your brains, because here we go. <laughs> here we go. N the never ending story isn't just about Bastion. It needs to keep going. And here's the problem. You have to pass it off to another child. Now we know that Bill and Ted, the dynamic duo that they are for, you know, I mean, maybe he's not the sharpest tack in the drawer, but uh, Bill S. Preston Esquire, he is clearly the brains of the duo, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whereas Ted Theodore Logan, AKA Keanu Reeves is a uh, Reeve Reeves. <laughs> he is the heart, the accident. He has accidental brilliance, right? So whenever Ted just talks, he's suddenly Bill is like, good thinking Ted. And then they do whatever it is that Keanu said in the first place. You notice yes. that I keep saying Keanu because this isn't even about Bill and Ted. This is about Keanu Reeves because the never ending story is just trying to get a hold of Keanu Reeves. That's why the next movie <laughs> that we think about Keanu Reeves in is also a simulation. So it's a simulation inside of a simulation inside of a simulation because we're in the matrix and it's getting darker <laughs> because the nothing wants nothing more than to make sure that Bill and Ted don't pass their history exam, that the humans are enslaved by robots. And we get to the point, we get to the point where Keanu Reeves' movies are so dark, they start with killing puppies. <laughs> oh! Yeah, that is the nothing. There's the nothing just to absorbing Keanu Reeves' entire life and our whole cinematic experience. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to the title of this conspiracy theory, which is Our Never Ending Keanu. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> so, the, so you're saying, Jesse, the opening scene in this movie is like UHF where uh, Raul's Wild Kingdom throwing puppies out windows. Yes, except we're all screwed. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. That is so funny. <laughs> so it starts with John Wick? No, that's where we're at now. If oh. no, Okay, okay. And so Bastion is actually the architect in the Matrix. And this is his last chance to try to get Keanu to see reason. If you reboot the Matrix, we're just doing this story again, Keanu. You have oh. to tear it down. You have to become the never-ending story. So, so, wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> so your Bill and Ted never-ending story <laughs> mashup. One plus one equals matrix? <laughs> I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense, but maybe... This isn't even a movie, guys. This is real life. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I love this. Ooh. Executive producer viewers, it's going to be expensive. I don't know how we produce this. It's going to be an expensive cinematic universe. It's apparently just the universe now. Yep. Yeah, the nothing got Bill. He's a vampire in some other movie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no and then he goes on to direct uh direct uh, independent films and documentaries yeah well you know less cool yeah yes. he had to face the music oh, oh. that was a good movie yeah. <laughs> i applaud yes. the pitch i feel i feel like i feel like those were two wildly different <laughs> pitches that weren't necessarily connected <laughs> okay but okay. were they but were they uh, really <laughs> Al had a question. What happened to the horse? You know what happened Ooh, to the horse, Al. Wait. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> Say his name, Nothing Al. got it. How did He's we miss never right the story beginning. and the wild stallions? How did we miss that link? Oh, man. Right. Oh, All yeah. the wild art taxes. Oh, Dead art taxes. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we were going to need it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> dead art acts. <laughs> it's been a while oh, since man. I did a Grolic Cinematic Universe. I feel like that's maybe a little more convoluted than we usually get, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fun. <laughs> I mean, it's... All right. That's, we're kind of witnessing that with Marvel now, right? It just becomes so big. It's just swallowing up other franchises. Yes, yeah, yeah. It just yeah, doesn't yeah. matter. Uh -huh. It doesn't like matter. Like that. Like that vampire movie came out, nobody even heard about it. <laughs> oh, did Morbius? that actually come out? Morbius? It's, it's yeah. in theaters. Oh, yeah. I think. It's coming. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. Okay, I thought it was already in theaters. Now, nobody yeah. still, nobody's still gonna know about and it. And eventually, everything's just gonna have <laughs> uh, Robert Downey Jr. in it, anyways. So, oh, well, that's true. This is just the Keanu Reeves version of that. Who would direct CGI James Dean? He's not. A, he, we're not even put him on the on the screen anymore. He's directing. Yeah, Maddie D asked who would direct. 
James Dean. Nothing. Gamora. C- CGI nothing. James Dean. Oh, oh CGI the, James. Hologram. The wild, the wild stallions that refuse to pull themselves out of the quicksand. Mm. Oh. Yeah. That's how, we end up, that's how we end up with Matrix. A little, little dark. Oh, man. I actually right. really like that turn for it. It's not a franchise. It's one movie because they just let themselves die in the swamp. <laughs> Wild stallions don't really rule anymore. Uh, and it all ends in ghost on ghost violence. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> we got Wild stallions fighting our taxes. They look like such strong hands. Good yeah. strong. That's Good funny. strong hands. <laughs> oh man. Bogus. <laughs> oh yeah, what's uh, that? Most not triumphant. No, yeah, most not triumphant, yes. Yes. Okay. You, hey, what about you guys? What movies hey! did you guys pick? Clearly it's not anything that's gonna be like potentially offensive. <laughs> you, oh, it won't be offensive <laughs> in the least. <laughs> Leading me to start off with this one? Yeah, it was your idea, so you start off. <laughs> I got to prep for this one. I gotta get ready it's actually for a pretty it. good go. idea. Oh, there we go. Oh, we'll do what we can. I got to do the thing, Jesse, with the, with the pitch storm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're going to do the voice and everything? This is going to get real offensive. All right. Clear your heads. You heard of all these things. The times today, they suck it. It's horrible. There's disease and famine. What do you want to do? You want to go back. You want to go back to the, the past. Back in time with a time machine. You want to live the 80s again. You want to live the, ni- the 90s again. We're going to combine the hit franchise, the hit movie, Back to the Future, with the faith epic, Jesus of Nazareth. We're going to combine <laughs> these two epic films together in a time adventure friendship bonding of sacrifice that will blow your mind <laughs> picture if you will punk kid in the 80s hanging out with some old guy we don't ask questions and then <laughs> we don't ask why and then the old guy says meet me at the mall at one in the morning and he's like cool <laughs> i'll do it on my skateboard because that's what we do it's 1984 85 whatever i'll ride the skateboard to the mall it's 1 a.m i'm sleepy i got the van halens in my ears I go down <laughs> and he says, Hey, what if we witnessed the birth of Christ? And right when he said that, the Libyans show up and start shooting at him. And he's like, Let's go. So then they go back in time to the birth of Christ. <laughs> and they're like, We're stuck. I thought oh, no. I'd be stuck in the 50s, Doc. No, we're back here at the beginning of it all. And Marty is the kid's name. He's the punk kid. He goes, I'm going to go talk to some people. He goes, don't do it. You'll mess up the timelines. Yeah. <laughs> Marty goes and talks to a guy named Joe. <laughs> and Joe's like, I can't be late. To my, my, my wife's giving birth to a baby. And he's like, no, he's got to hang out. He makes Joe late. <laughs> he makes Joe late. And Jesus is born without a dad. He's a single mom. Again? With Jesus. <laughs> he's a single Again. mom. <laughs> and Jesus is like, I don't have any friends. I have a single mom. It's a life is hard. And then Marty becomes friends with Jesus. They have a time machine. They can go back and forth. Then he's friends with Jesus. And Jesus oh, is no. like, I got to send you back in time. I'm basically God. <laughs> he's like, but I need a lightning bolt. He's like, my powers aren't that strong yet. I can't do it. They stay friends the whole time. All the things happen with Jesus. If you keep track, read your Bibles, you know. <laughs> At the very end, Jesus is on the cross, and Marty is like, I gotta go back in time. Jesus is like, I forgot about that part. Hits him with the lightning. <laughs> Boom! They're back in 1985. And nobody's offended. And it's a- <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's offended. <laughs> yeah, Mar- Marty's just like 35 years older. Oh, God. And the, Marty's, uh, and Marty's the, old. The blasphemy <laughs> actually plays into the plot. They're literally struck by lightning because literally struck by lightning. What's been happening? Movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be toys. There'll be action figures. <laughs> kids will love it. Posters. Kids, kids will love it. Lunch boxes. Re- It'll be everywhere. Re- It'll be religious- jo- Joseph of Nazareth. His his figure is just gonna be like <laughs> dejected dad. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm late again. Uh. Sorry. You hit the religious kids. You hit the kids that love the science fictions. It's amazing. Everybody will buy it. There's your there's your pitch. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, Mart- Marticus McFlyus. That's his Roman name. I don't know what. I don't know what's a darker uh, future here. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Jim's like Eddie. You you okay? You who hurt you? <laughs> now I'm trying to think of like the, the Back to the Future staples. Like there's got to be like the, some type of skateboard type scene. Like how that would play out. Oh, he's yeah. got a he's got like a Gideon Bible that he he just happened no, to have in no, the no. back of the no of the I got DeLorean, it. and it's like Marty. oh no the the pages are fading. <laughs> <They're> so, the, <laughs> the, 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 the new, the new Testament is starting to disappear. It's only Old Testament. It's all no, no. It's all Psalms what, and Proverbs and Isaiah. I know what Marty uses skateboard for. Chariot races. We're doing yeah, chariot yeah, there races. It is. Yep. There it is. He's a gladiator. So Biff, yep, one of the Biff is the bullying gladiator. And uh, Marty is the, the kid. Do the, do the skids into a pile of <laughs> Just get the pile of yes. Yeah, well done. Yep. Now, do, Doubting Thomas, you wouldn't want me to turn it in in your handwriting and I'd get in trouble. Now, Ooh. would you? No, no. Instead of Biff, his bully is Judas. Yep. 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 Judas is always out to get him. I guess totally Jesus. not a fit. They're saving. They're saving the Bible. It's not offensive. That's what I'm saying. They're saving it. This is yeah, actually like a Bible, good. Yeah. yeah, they're stopping it from. They're stopping this from not happening. You Jesus know what it is, is in the garden? Oh, go ahead. Right. Science. It, it, you know what it's kind of like. It, Jesus lost his dad, but had hope, and <laughs> saved day by electrocuting Marty and sending him back to the yeah. future. So the Bible yeah. happened. So did yeah, they wait? So the did Bible they? Happened. Whatever. Did they snap back to 1985, and the Jesus is like, listen. I need to go back in three days. Don't ask why. In three days, yeah. I got three I'll days be back in the back. future. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 And then, and then yeah. Marty has the letter that Jesus wrote him, and it's all yellowed over time, and he's looking at it. <laughs> oh, do, do, yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, that'd that'd be be, that would be a magical letter, right? <laughs> it's yellowed because that's what parchment looked like when he got it. It's like literally, it's future. one day old. Yeah. It's one day yeah. old. Yeah, it's not old <laughs> it's other than yellow. they didn't have bleach. <laughs> Uh, Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's sitting there, and and Marty's looking at him off to the side, and he turns around. What? <laughs> Stop it! Stop staring at me! <laughs> what are you staring at? You're you're Jesus Christ. You just replaced, yeah, who are you, Marty? He's yeah. you just replaced the uh, the Apostle Peter, the first Pope, with Marty McFly. <laughs> Yes. In the garden. Yeah. In the, I don't know you. I don't know you. Three times. Ah. Yeah. Oh, crud now oh, there's no, now there's a rooster crowing is all sorts of nonsense yep do we still have easter or no i'm so confused <laughs> oh yeah yeah <laughs> it's just more chocolate easter? now what's yeah, think brown about dur- it. doing during all this marty what's that that's doc brown yeah what's he doing this could be the sidebar where Mark uh, Doc Brown, Mark Brown, Doc Doc Brown is doing uh, like the thing he did in Back to the Future Three. He falls in love with some lady. He's like, "I'm staying here." I'm- <laughs> oh, okay. Right. It's right. Mary Magdalene. Okay. Yeah. Mary Magdalene. Yeah. I got yeah. an olive olive tree farm. I'm good. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sacrilege man. never killed it. Killed anybody? <laughs> ah, Christ, Marty. And say, you know what? Marty drops the JCs a lot in Back to the Future. So I'm just saying, I mean, in this movie, it makes more sense. He's like, yeah, I'm right here, man. What's up? Yeah, he says it. And Jesus like, yeah, okay. Yeah, what? Yeah. What would you need? Right here. <laughs> That's he our pitch. Fun of, would he get made fun of for wearing his vest, though? That'd be so funny if someone did come up and Dor thinks he's gonna drown. drown. Dor <laughs> thinks he's gonna drown. Or does he know? think there's gonna be another flood? Forty days <laughs> and forty think, nights. Does he think a flood is coming? Or you think you're Noah or something? Mm. <laughs> oh man. Or his pants are his pants are pegged, so they're like, oh look, he thinks a flood is coming. Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna start walking those animals two by two onto a boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is wearing like 3D glasses, but it's just like <laughs> it's like sticks. It's like st- uh, <laughs> Why don't you make like a tree and get out of Nazareth? <laughs> yeah. I love the idea of the Roman Biff. Roman yes. Biff. I like Pond. the Roman Bifficus. Biff. Yes. Yeah. Bifficus Maximus. Bifficus Maximus. So, so there you uh, go, audience. Which, <laughs> which so, so if they're going to school, if she if he goes to school with him, are they going to the synagogue or something like that, and like having a yeah. they having a dance, 
a, a champ. No, they're just the flipping. Dance. They're flipping uh, money changer tables. Yep, they oh. were charging money at the dance. <laughs> and the Jesus, and they're like, "Hey, Marty, you want to get this one with me?" Foof. <laughs> Marty helped him flip over tables. <laughs> like, yeah, we got a bar mitzvah to go to. That's what we're gonna. Al, go you to. have to draw Roman Biff now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. That's what, so, that's what you choose to offer. <laughs> what are what are the viewer? What would you put your money behind? <laughs> Which of those uh, <laughs> dark dystopian future where our our, uh, our future rests in the hands of Keanu Reeves in any number of movies, or uh, be fair, a future generally. where we might not have Christ if Marty doesn't get his act together? <laughs> where, there you go. Where Marty Marty McFly saves. Saves Christianity. Saves Christmas. <laughs> Saves Christmas. <laughs> Keep in yeah. mind, these could all be franchises. We're sense. not talking one, one Jesus no. of Nazareth, the Back to the Future. That's a whole new series. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Ooh, a multiverse, if you will. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're not thinking fourth dimensionally enough, Marty. <laughs> Disney Plus material. Those crucifixes won't be there. <laughs> the, 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 the Nazareth verse. Uh, it's a franchise juggernaut. <laughs> Yeah, the, the audience verse. is just Sorry, I'm silence. Slow. <laughs> the Nazareth verse. The Nazareth verse. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, we, Sorry, I feel like we've stunned them into silence. They can't. Uh, I'm stunned. I feel like yeah. GCU needs to come back. The Garlic Cinematic Universe needs to come back, and we're just gonna skip the reviews. And just do just pitches. do the pitch. Just the pitch pitches. is the best part, anyways. Yeah. Be- yeah, I agree. Because the best. Yeah, when somebody comes up with a good pitch, that's awesome. But then it's when it starts, like everyone starts uh, dogpiling, and it just like becomes more ridiculous and more ridiculous. That's that's the beauty of the pitches. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have a feeling we can get the Christian over the back to the Emmanuel. <laughs> so I'm <laughs> back to the Emmanuel. Oh, back to the Emmanuel. Yeah. See, and See? then we got Marty McFly saves Christmas is the name of the Omag Jazz Fusion record. There you go. That's to be our song, our opening song. I mean. Marty McFly Christmas special. <laughs> that could be a Hallmark. We could do a Hallmark movie there too. I mean, you could just go crazy I mean, with this. They have a time machine. <laughs> yeah. Go. Yeah. The funny part about like... that was when he's like, December 25th, 000. <laughs> it's like, yeah. 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 How like, did that work? It's not BC. It's not. Yeah. Oh, man. The GCU. I like Eddie's pitch style as a movie, a greedy movie exec. All right. Right. Kids are gonna buy this stuff. They're gonna love it. Parents yeah. will take him. Yeah, I felt like uh, he was trying to like s- s- sell me this movie pitch in a back alley somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, don't, don't look at the don't look at the steamy pipes. Look at me. <laughs> oh man, I got like the right. Van, don't uh, question the rights. I got the right. Que- I got it. I bought it. I'm good. In the van. Yeah, in what, dark so what alley. do we call? This movie is all fair use. What did we call this movie? What, what's the title for your Back to the Future epic? Uh, uh, back to the Emmanuel. I don't know. Like, back I like to that the one. <laughs> Marty of Nazareth. Marty um, of Nazareth. <laughs> Marty of Nazareth. <laughs> Marty of Nazareth. <laughs> uh, back to the. Back to the. I can't. Back to the Christian. I don't know. Back to the. Back to the something. I got to think about that one. Ah. Uh. So Matt Matt found a, a glitch in the in the pitch. Travels in time, not space. It's a good point. That's true. Good That's, true. That's true. I cry a foul on. T- well, no, because now they have the they have the conversion. Oh, they can we fly. Have go, we have they to can go fly. with Back to the Future Two's version of the DeLorean. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, they, right, yeah. they can fly. They can fly. So they I don't know. Go. I think we should go with the number three's you know, train. You know. You know who's or the train? Uh, yeah. The train. Yeah. You know whose time machine travels through time and space besides Doctor Who? Keanu Reeves's. You're right. Oh, oh, indeed. Maybe. Bill and Ted and maybe Keanu Reeves has to pick up Marty and Doc from, from the Lone Pine Twin Pines Mall before the Libyans get there or else the nothing. The oh, nothing. man. Did we just do a quadruple? Did we just- yeah, everybody wins now. I'm telling you, our 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 never ending our Bill and Ted's never ending story will swallow your franchise. <laughs> like <laughs> Jonah <laughs> and the whale. Yeah, oh, there it is. 
Okay. Oh, Back to the greatest story ever told. That's a good one, Matty D. Oh, uh, good go. job, Matt. Back to the story, greatest story. Back to the cross. Oh no. Yeah. I think I think the real I think the real winners here are the viewers. I think, <laughs> That's I think so. Oh man. Keanu hey. is God. <laughs> Nobody uh culturally appropriated any uh Native Americans in our pitches, so we're, we're no, yeah. we already got yeah. away. We learned our <laughs> we learned a lesson that Lisa and Ricardo and the main character and you did. main character us and us, you us yeah, yeah us yeah nine year old so, Jay Leno nine year old uses <laughs> giant yes yes the good the chin was out to here childlike uses yes he was eating a bag of Doritos <laughs> by care by kerosene light that close to kerosene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we got this one pretty well wrapped up, guys. I think mm -hmm. the Hollywood's going to be calling or Netflix or Hulu. <laughs> Somebody will be knocking on our door wanting the rights to this. To be. <laughs> Except they already own the rights, so they're probably that just trying to <laughs> <laughs> Merchandising. That's where the real money is the made. There you go. The, the, the back to the greatest story ever told flamethrower. That's what we need. Mm. There it is. There you, you need your <laughs> Mr. Faith that fusion burning bush problem for sure. Oh yeah, Ooh. see, <laughs> ah, see, <laughs> Jesse's on top of it. <laughs> I, I, now we I'm have... picturing like subplots where they've got to like ensure <laughs> these miracles happen, <laughs> but and it's some like it's elaborate it. ruse. It's played oh, like yeah. a comedy. I set up the I set up the bush and I set up the flames, dude. Yeah. Wasn't there yep. uh Eddie Eddie Dude. might know this. Wasn't there a Star Trek episode where the Voyager goes back in time and they're like throwing tribbles in the in the old uh, original Star yeah. Trek? Yeah. Yes. They were having to make so, sure that the tribbles went the way it did. They were like forcing the yeah. It was it yes. was good. It was good. So it could be like that. So you could have Bill and Ted and and Marty traveling in together, you know, to the burning bush, to Jonah and the whale, making sure everything happens the way it's supposed to happen. They're like, dude, you got to cut off that Roman guy's ear, bro. <laughs> so yeah. Jesus can heal it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good thinking, Ted. Yeah, excellent. He cuts his head you off. You got to turn all this water into wine, Bill, so hurry it up. <laughs> it's like pouring bottles of wine and then he's handed them to him. <laughs> no way, Doc Brown. Yes way, that's Ted. That's so good. That would be a fun That'd be a fun one. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And he could introduce the disciples. This is Peter... The fisherman, or you come from like Bob Genghis Khan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're yeah. holding. They start bringing back like, that's right, Mister the Kid. We're gonna need you to be a disciple, and he winds up being Judas. <laughs> that's yeah. right, Mister. That's right, Mister the Christ. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They have uh, Jesus's feet on their shoulders as they're, as they're underwater, like holding yeah. him up. Yeah. Dude, he totally <laughs> told me to wash his feet. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, Clean yeah. feet, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we are. We are. <laughs> We're going to either gain a lot of listeners or lose a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All in good fun. It's all in good fun. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Napoleon is John the Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> they take John the Baptist to Waterloo. <laughs> <laughs> John, John the Baptist's head on a platter for Herod. I think we stumbled across the best of the possible pitches, which is Bill and Ted and Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> yeah, really, really. Almost yeah. really it is. It's just like Bill and Ted. Yeah. Like, I don't know how we get home, dude. Yeah, gotta make all they don't happen. have quarters here. How are we going to power the booth? We're definitely going to ace religious studies now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They start worshiping yeah. the golden calf. Don't man. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Yeah. You gotta have the a devil, poker. dude. <laughs> yeah, he does that and gets arrested. <laughs> oh man. Uh well hey, that was fun, guys. Yeah. I appreciate yeah. you guys coming up with this idea and doing this together. It was fun. So we'll definitely have to do it again. It was great. Mm -hmm. So thanks. Thank you as well. All those things. Yeah, all those idea. things and more. And happy yes. eighth anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good eight, job, guys. Eight years of Congratulations, college. guys. Goodness gracious. So, why don't you tell the listeners where they can find you guys and and uh, how they can listen to you? Uh, 
also your viewers are awesome by the way uh, i'm enjoying the chat i mean we oh. know maddie d uh yes he's a favorite or i mean he's i shouldn't say that he's he's we love him okay uh but yeah <laughs> your chat is great oh it's fun <laughs> they're, they're good group. i'm not jealous at all <laughs> <laughs> uh you can check us out at uh, growlixpodcast.com g-r-a-w-l-i-x podcast.com uh, we do a live stream every week at about the same time you guys do it so you know yeah, we've know. been talking about maybe changing yeah. our times for a while but uh, we'll see what happens um yeah but yeah at, like your guys' show i i we also will put the episode up on audio so if you just want to check out the podcast later um you can do that and uh, you can find us on all the social medias or YouTube or anything. Just throw slash Grolix podcast at the end of the URL and you'll get there. So nice. Yep. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, we got to sign off and really appreciate it. Like you said, coming on the show and we'll uh, do this again sometime. It was a lot of fun and we'll uh, pick another book and pick another mashup and do it all over again. We'll go back in time and start all over. <laughs> Maybe next time Back it'll be uh, some Ke uh, Kevin Costner can save the universe. Oh, Ooh, of course. Wait, Waterworld mixed with yeah, that would you know, <laughs> <of them. laughs> Oh man. Wow. Oh, wow. All right. Well, yeah. Thanks for all the, everybody in the chat, and thanks for everybody listening later. We really appreciate it, and uh, we'll sign off. And thanks again, everybody. Take care, everyone. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.